Good morning, tree people. I'm Nick Nealon. I'm a researcher in the U4 lab at the University of Minnesota. And this morning, we are here to talk about stem girdling roots. Stem girdling roots are a type of root dysfunction. Mostly it's caused by improper planting practices. When you're looking for stem girdling roots, usually you're gonna be seeing dieback in the canopy. You're gonna be seeing early leaf drop or early change of leaves and uh, accumulation of dead wood outside of what is normal. Usually with dead wood, you're gonna see it on the interior of the canopy, limbs that are shaded out. But when you see it forming in the exterior of the canopy, that's when you can be developing issues. This tree is a St. Croix elm. It's a commercially available selection from Afton, Minnesota, and is a very vigorous growing tree. But this one is starting to thin out. It's having issues. And when we look at the base of the tree, there's a very obviously apparent stem girdling root. When we're looking at stem girdling roots, we're looking for these tangentially growing roots that are beginning to apply pressure to the stem. Now, when a tree's young and you plant it, this might not be fully apparent if you don't pull the soil away and check the root system. But if a root is growing sideways and the stem's here, eventually they're going to be making contact where you're gonna get a constriction of the flow of water and minerals in the tree. And you're gonna see dieback, you're gonna see a reduction of vigor. And this can also be a point where you'll get failure during windstorms. This causes a weak spot. Roots can grow over other roots and that can be fine. But if root and stem tissue contacts, that's when you're gonna develop issues. So when you're diagnosing stem girdling roots, this one's very apparent and it's at the surface, but sometimes if a tree is planted very deeply originally, and they haven't pulled away the soil to get to the root collar and have that be level with the surface. You can see other symptoms. So a flattening of the stem, usually when a tree hits the ground and this varies by species with how distinct the root flares are. But if it's going directly into the ground, which we sometimes refer to as telephone poling, that can be a sign of stem girdling roots. Another sign is gonna be necrosis going up and down the stem. So those are some of the symptoms where you can identify stem girdling roots. Next, we're gonna see how to address stem girdling roots once you find them. All right, so the first step when we're addressing stem girdling roots is that we wanna pull the mulch and some of the soil back and establish our work area. This tree seems to have a couple issues. There's flattening of the stem and the bulging going around it. So we're gonna, we're gonna pull everything back and see what we can address. Once we've raked the mulch back, we can take our shovel and very carefully do some rough excavation. There are more advanced techniques that are more equipment intensive, like using an air spade. But this video is designed to show how to do this with tools that most people will have available to them. All right, so once you've done the bulk of the excavation with a shovel, I like using a soil knife. You can use a trowel or whatever smaller tool you have. You can get in and start working away some of the soil on a smaller scale. This is actually looking better than I thought it would. We can see that root flare is going down. I'm not finding stem girdling roots yet. Now that we're partway through the excavation of the root system, we can see that there's a nice root growing out, probably originating around here and going down. And this is what we want, is things going down and away from the trunk of the tree. And then we have this root growing tangentially across it. It looks like the two roots have fused together, but the tangential root is clearly damaging the stem tissue of the tree. When you find your problematic roots that you wanna take out, you wanna see if you can get them fully excavated. It makes it a lot easier to get tools in there if you're not dealing with the soil. So take the time on the front end to fully excavate your problematic roots. So a lot of this root system, it seems a little bit buried. Ideally, the root flare would be at the soil surface level, but I'm not seeing too many other stem girdling roots. It's mostly this, this large, obvious one from the surface. Sometimes you'll have trees that are 100% girdled, 
those are the kind of trees where you'll see them leaf out in the spring and then die that same year. So now that we have our offending root fully excavated, we can start the process of removing it. Now there are a number of different tools you can use to cut these roots. Some of the more basic ones, the soil knife has a little serrated edge, so if you're dealing with one inch roots, you can make those little cuts. It's not the cleanest cut with a root similar to pruning, you would like to make a clean cut. You can use some hand pruners. Don't use your favorite ones because soil is a great way to dull anything. You can also use a pruning saw that is past its prime to cut larger roots like this one. You can use a pair of loppers if you want to step up from the hand pruners. And these are can be difficult to maneuver into place. You're going to be dealing with some weird angles when you're, when you're cutting roots. Some of the electrified tools that are handy for this process, you can use an oscillating multi-tool, if anyone's familiar with this. Uh, it has a vibrating blade, but you can make plunge cuts with it so you can push directly into the root. If you have a sawzall available and you use like a demo blade, these can be a really efficient way to cut through the roots. When you're using a reciprocating saw, you want to be careful that you don't poke the tip of the blade into anything. Uh, that is going to result in the blade bending and it's gonna be very uncomfortable for you because your arms are gonna absorb all that shock. This can happen a lot when you're trying to cut roots and there's soil around and there's other things. So you have to be pretty careful and pretty comfortable with a reciprocating saw if you're gonna use one for this. When we're using a reciprocating saw, we wanna make sure we have the proper protective, personal protective equipment. I'm going to be wearing gloves, which you probably should put on for this entire process. Some work gloves, safety glasses, and then also hearing protection. All right, so we have our personal protective equipment on. Usually you wanna use the shortest blade you can in a reciprocating saw, but this root is actually pretty hefty. So I put a larger blade on there. We're gonna try to cut the root as close to its origin as we can. The root originates over here. It fused together with another root that we want to keep, so I don't want to cut it back much farther, but removing the root here is going to take pressure off of the stem. It'll pop out a bit. So we want to make a clean, straight cut, kind of like we're making a pruning cut, but when you're dealing with roots, typically there's going to be a lot of compression. So you might want to make a cut a little farther out and make some relief cuts so that you can make your final cut. All right, so we're through with our first cut. You can see I made a top and bottom bisect cut similar to a three-point pruning cut, and I made a little relief notch in here. Roots, you're gonna get a lot of compression. That can be why the cutting is so difficult. And now I'm just gonna try to make as clean a cut as I can without cutting into the main stem of the tree. go. Now we have our roots severed. I don't know if we're going to be able to get, it's very tied into the rest of the tree. So I don't know if we're going to be able to get more than that. A lot of times when you make this cut and sever the root, it'll actually pop out. But getting in here to cut this size of a root is probably going to be too close to the stem and we're going to risk damaging it. Some concerns when you're making root cuts like this, you wanna be aware of what kind of tree you're dealing with. So on an elm, it's a very vigorous grower. This is a large root to be cutting out, but I'm not as concerned based off the species. If it's an oak, you wanna do it later, as late in the season as you can. If you have damage that's more significant from this, from stem girdling roots, it's good to get a certified arborist involved in the discussion process. Making these sort of cuts can seem drastic, but it can make a huge difference for the, the health of the tree if it is getting compressed from stem girdling roots. So in this video, we went over how to diagnose and examine stem girdling roots on trees, why stem girdling roots are bad, and we removed one stem girdling root from an elm tree. Stem girdling roots can prematurely end the life of your tree and they can be a hazard during storms and heavy wind events. If you're concerned about stem girdling roots, 
This can be a good first step. Do an examination, see if your tree is suffering from them. And remember, planting trees, always plant them at the soil level so we can avoid this problem on the front end.